What's up, Brass Nation? So, one of my YouTube followers recently posted a comment on one of my videos, and I figured it'd be an interesting topic to cover today. So, let me read the comment for you so you get a better understanding. So, Mr. Frank Walsh says, Much of your practice info seems to be aimed at advanced players, as it should be. Nevertheless, could you throw a few bones towards us lowly intermediates or at least point out which techniques might be the most helpful and uh, which could be utilized later? So upon the request, I'm going to be doing some videos covering the information uh, relevant to younger, less advanced players. And um, since there's quite a bit to talk about, I'm going to be breaking down all the videos into smaller segments. Also, uh, long videos are dead boring to watch. Let's start off by making one thing clear. Mastering any brass instrument consists of two par learning process, which is mastering the basic techniques, In other words, managing your air control, your amateur setup, and your body posture, and also the advanced techniques, such as double and triple tongue, fast slurs, uh, lip trills, multitonics, bends, and etc. The level of your basic techniques will determine how good can your advanced techniques, uh, ability to play pieces and exact control can get. So uh, let's cover the key stuff and make you sound awesome. One thing you need to understand that even though basics are supposed to improve your advanced techniques, unless you know how and why are you doing them, they're going to benefit you very little and it's going to be boring as hell to do. However, we're going to make sure that's not going to happen. Let me take you through my basics routine. Each day I usually start my warm-up routine with some sort of airflow exercise. Usually it's some sort of a bend, but uh, since it might be a little bit complex for some of you, we're going to start out with something different. Key things to remember before you start. Don't freak out if the sound is not up to your personal best standard. We use a lot of jaw muscles when we play brass instruments. Unfortunately, sometimes we apply way too much pressure than needed on our lips. Therefore, uh, it might result in our facial muscle fatigue and poor blood circulations in our face. For example, yesterday I had a very busy practice day and a concert later on. Uh, today when I woke up, my lips were terribly flat, the sound wasn't there in the morning. Um, and oftentimes in these situations, a lot of less experienced players freak out and start doing stupid stuff. So we're going to make sure uh, we are avoiding this. We're going to concentrate mainly on the feel rather than the sound. And uh, if the sound doesn't come out perfectly well in the beginning, it's going to come out later on. So don't worry about that. Use absolutely no attack in the exercise I'm about to show. The goal here is to make sure we find the most optimal space in between our lips. So whenever we start blowing air through our mouthpiece, our lips are going to naturally shut to the point where they start vibrating. And therefore, we're going to find the most optimal spacing between our lips uh, without corrupting the air wave. Even though the concept of the airflow is key to all brass instruments, the application of exercises will differ. The most relevant difference between various brass instruments is the size of the mouthpiece. And um, even though baritone, trombone, etc. have similar mouthpiece size to the euphonium, if you try to play them in the exact same way, it's most likely going to sound terrible. It's mainly because uh, the way euphonium is built and it requires much slower air wave.
So pretty much what I'm trying to say that I'm not gonna give you crap advice by saying this is the most optimal routine for any brass player. This is mainly targeted for euphonium players, but hey, if you bear with me, I'm gonna make sure that everyone gets their fair share of useful tips. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play this little pattern, which is C, G, C, G, C, G, C, G, C. And then we're gonna go chromatically down to our lowest possible node. Oh, that's gonna depend on whether you have a fourth valve or not. Imagine you're sitting in a chair just like I am at the moment. So uh, I am in a very relaxed state. Well, guess what? You need to relax even more. And uh, in order to make this work perfectly well, you have to be really focusing on the way the plane feels rather than focusing on sound for this moment. As soon as your face and neck will start tensing, the air will stop moving. So in order to make sure that doesn't happen, try and feel your fingers, your fingertips, your shoulders, your legs. These are very, very sensitive areas and easy to feel and control rather than trying to feel your neck and face, which is not that easy to do. Muscles work intact, so as soon as one muscle tenses, all the muscle tense. So this is going to be very, very important, so listen carefully. You have to make sure that you keep your body completely still. The only thing moving is your lips. We have to make sure that the only thing that changes the note is the airflow in your tongue. Uh, this is going to make sure that you do not interfere with your airflow, therefore risking splitting the notes. As soon as playing the exercise starts feeling a little bit uncomfortable, take the instrument off your face, relax for a moment, uh, give yourself a little break and then continue. It is very important that you focus on a feel rather than sound at the moment. This is the key point of this exercise. Um, you will notice shortly that when you continue on playing this exercise on a daily basis, it's gonna become more and more easy to perform. And you're gonna feel more relaxed. It's gonna be feeling more natural. This is gonna become a habit to you, a great habit. If you're relaxed enough, you should be able to get that slow, warm airway. So how are you supposed to know whether you're doing the exercise the right way? Well, if you're playing it correct and your air wave is correct, you're supposed to be feeling pretty much no break in between your intervals or very little to none. It's almost as if you were playing a scale. No gaps in between notes at all. If you manage to do that, you have a great chance of doing some cool stuff on euphonium. completely relax and limit your body movement is just a piece of a puzzle uh, when it comes to learning the airflow. I'm sure most of you have heard of the importance of keeping your throat open. What actually be focusing on is the area at the back of your mouth where the little tissue, dangling tissue called uvula is. You see the position of the Adam's apple is purely related to the positioning of your tongue. Hey, if you like my YouTube videos, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one lessons, I'm going to make sure to put my contact details below in the description box. Thanks for watching. Till the next time.